Legendary college basketball coach John Wooden said this about athletes. Sports don't build character, they reveal it. That was certainly true for the 2005 Gary Railcast professional baseball team. The positive attitude of the organization culminated in a championship celebration. Since I attended 20 games in 2005, including the final game, I witnessed much of an unprecedented turnaround under the guidance of manager Greg Taggart. Over the course of the season and the championship series, Railcats players revealed their character. Every baseball team faces tough personnel changes after each season. Following the 2004 season, when the Railcats posted the worst record in Northern League history, the club decided not to renew the contract of underperforming manager Gary Templeton. According to the 2005 Souvenir Program, veteran Independent League manager Greg Taggart was brought in for his experience turning around struggling franchises and his strength of his character. In nine seasons managing in the Northern League, Taggart amassed a career record of 412 victories against 336 defeats, the best in league history. I first saw the 2005 Railcats at the home opener, May 23rd, as they hosted the Edmonton Cracker Cats. On that chilly night, the Railcats exhibited patience at the plate drawing nine walks against a pitching staff that yielded only five hits in the game. They also showed poise in the field, turning three double plays and committing no errors. The attitude of a baseball team can be judged by their reaction to injuries to key players. They can resign themselves to failure and excuses, or they can welcome the challenge of compensating for the injured player. As I found my seat in Schomburg's Alexian Field August 7th, I noticed that center fielder Anthony Iaposi had a cast on his thumb and was out of the lineup. Iaposi was the leadoff hitter and one of the most experienced players on the team. His absence would surely be detrimental to the club. But instead, the Railcats won that Sunday afternoon game in Schomburg in 10 innings. When the Railcats traded for Phelan Lentini to replace Iaposi, Lentini fulfilled his role impressively, remaining in the lineup when Iaposi returned. The Railcats earned their first ever playoff berth on September 2nd and they celebrated by tackling each other in a dog pile. With the playoff spot secured, Taggart could have rested his starting players, but a division title was still a possibility. Instead of relaxing for the final two games, Taggart kept the Railcats focused, completing the sweep of Joliet and winning the second half division title. It's been said that if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. The Railcats did that by defeating 2004 champion St. Paul Saints in a five-game series. When Gary took the deciding game against St. Paul, they knew that they would have to travel to North Dakota to take on the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks. Fargo set the league record for wins in a season in 2005 and posted the best winning percentage in professional baseball. After dropping the first two games of the series at Fargo, the Railcats would have to finish the season at home at U.S. Steel Yard, needing to win all three games. Having already exceeded expectations, the Railcats could have bowed to an apparently superior opponent. If the guys were feeling pressure, they did not show it on the field. Gary beat the Red Hawks Friday night, then pounded out 12 runs Saturday to force a decisive Game 5.
Sunday, September 18th, my family was among the 2,496 people who journeyed to Gary's U.S. Steel Yard to witness the championship game. Anticipation filled the stands as the players went through their pregame routines. The Railcats had persevered through a two-game series deficit, but with the title on the line, they would be facing the league's toughest pitcher, Brandon Culp. Culp, who started the All-Star game at U.S. Steel Yard, finished the regular season undefeated, winning 14 games. Culp had not been beaten in the playoffs either, adding another victory to his unblemished record. The Railcats took an aggressive approach against Culp in the first inning. The first two batters, Iaposi and Lentini, singled and tripled respectively and scored the only two runs of the game for the Railcats. Working with a slim lead, starting pitcher Jamie Bennett pitched into the sixth inning, allowing only a solo home run to Byron Jeffcoat. Travis Kerber pitched three perfect innings in relief to keep the score 2-1. to one. By seizing the only opportunity they were given, the Railcats were three outs away from a championship. Closer Derek Lopez came in to pitch the ninth inning. Retiring the first two men he faced, Lopez could finish the season against Fargo's best slugger, Eric Koffler. With two strikes against Koffler, Lopez induced the hitter to swing at, light, at strike three, but catcher Jose Yepes could not catch the ball, keeping the play alive. Koffler alertly raced for first base, but Yepes fielded the ball, and his throw to first base completed the strikeout, the game, and the season. The players and staff stormed the field and scrambled into one more dog pile as the fans high-fived and cheered a baseball championship in Northwest Indiana. As I stood there cheering with my family, I thought about how remarkable that moment was. The Railcats had brought my family together many times since coming to Gary in 2003. Now here we were, vicariously sharing the joy of the team's triumph. I had seen 30 games at the U.S. Steel Yard in the dismal 2004 season. I never expected the turnaround that Greg Tagger engineered would reap rewards so quickly. In a league of similarly, similarly skilled players, maybe character and attitude, rather than talent, can be the difference in being a champion or an also-ran. It is rare for an ind independent league ball player to reach the major leagues. For most of the Railcats, this would be the pinnacle of their baseball careers. For their focus, their perseverance, their aggressive attitude on the field, and for their faith in each other, they deserve to be remembered.
The set by Lopez. Here's the one two to Koffler. It's on the way. Swing and a miss, ball get away from Yepes. Picks it up, throws to first base. Do you believe? It's over! Real Cats win! The Real Cats are the Northern League champions! Oh man, this, this, this team, we call ourselves the no-names, so this right here, it, it's an honor, but it goes to this team right here, because we're the no-names. Nobody, nobody thought we could do it except you people right here, and us. Awesome. Thanks for coming out in the playoffs. You guys are outstanding. Rocking this place, rocking. <laughs>